last couple of days have been um, hectic because of that passage. Had a bit of a fogging, got a bit of a fogging and then had a nice sail up here. I don't know, we've just been really stressed out lately. Things have been breaking and nothing's been going to plan. You go to use a tool or something and it just breaks and kind of just gets to you after a while and it happens continuously over and over and over again so yeah we're just gonna go hire a scooter today and see if we can find a new multimeter because that broke I don't I don't think we're gonna have any success maybe look for a solar regulator because we think our regulator decided to also break. pack up and leave um, it's either that or there's something wrong with the batteries but the regulator is showing that it's not putting any um, amps into the into the batteries. So if we charge it up with the engine, it seems to be working fine. But it's just the solar the solar decided to stop working. So uh, yeah, we'll go in and see what we can do today. We have got ourselves a scooter uh, for five bucks for the day, and we are going to get uh, scooter into Singaraja to. Oh god, look for some sort of solar place. Lol, like we're gonna find one. It's like we put ourselves in these like situations constantly and we're just setting ourselves up for disappointment. But we're gonna try anyway. Because you never know, we might rock up and we might be like, damn, this is a good solar store that I didn't expect to see in northern Bali. Probably not though. Oh, that's good. We really have to apologise for the lack of Lavina footage we have. We spent about four nights anchored here in the bay watching the masses of tourist boats flock to the skyline each morning in search of dolphin pods, for which Lavina is famous for. It appeared the tourist boats never actually found said dolphins, and as a consolation to the paying tourists, drove as close as practically possible alongside our boat for an enthusiastic wave and sticky beak into our floating home. Yet another quirky reality of this lifestyle, a small sacrifice we were happy to make in hopes it helped our dolphin friends get some peace and quiet. Poor things having camera wielding tourist boats zooming across the calm bay in desperate search of them each and every morning. Whilst anchored in Lavina, we hired a driver and spent the day searching hopelessly for a generator in Denpasar, the capital of Bali. We were of course unsuccessful and it only compounded our ever increasing boat life stress. Our time in Lavina Beach has come to an end. We need to skedaddle and get a move on. So we are today off to Kangian. It's going to be an overnight passage. Um, we want to arrive in the light, so we will leave at midday and then probably arrive around 8 a.m. tomorrow. So it means we'll be doing passage throughout the night, but it's better timing. Well, I'm hoping after the crossing from Lombok to Bali, I'm certainly praying that this is a much more comfortable passage because I did not have a good time at all. This is a fellow boat that we recognize from Madana Bay Marina. That is a nice boat. They didn't chat to us much though. They were quite boat bound. Sometimes we're like that too though. We like to just like hang on the boat and hide. It's like a nice little escape from other humans. Bye Bali. Bali, yeah. Um, from here on out, it's kind of remote, a bit more remote than usual. Is it going to be fish for dinner? Yeah, fishy, fishy, fishy. Let's be honest, I'm going to be absolutely devastated if we catch one because we'll have, we'll have to kill it and I'll be so sad. Quite often, we don't even know we have a fish on, we just like wind in and next minute there's a fish on. Still a long night ahead. Hopefully we get a bit more wind. But the sea state's a bit better now. When we first came out, it was a little bit blah. Kind of no wind and just big swell. But now we've got a bit of wind and the swell's calmed down. So we'll see. Welcome.
come to your life There's no turning back Even what we We caught some rubbish! We will find you Unfortunately, the crossing or passage isn't going to be as comfortable as we had hoped Not too bad, but we are kind of smashing into it a little bit so I'm just going to reheat some food that I cooked the other night. It's just like a rice dish, um, which is going to be a little bit annoying while we're underway, but whatever. Them's the breaks. And then I'm going to boil the jug and just fill a thermos with hot water. So I've got some hot drinks for the overnight passage. So the stove has this little like stopper thing here. They kind of just we can put up when we're underway so things don't slide off if we hit a big rogue wave. Hopefully it comes down. The problem is that the seas are on the beam again. So it's not like super windy or anything, um, which is good. But it's just, yeah, swell on the beam, which our boat just doesn't really like. We don't have a big heavy keel underneath us. We're just like this shallow cork on the water. So when we've got following seas, great. The rest of the time, however, not so great. But you know what, that's in every boat. <laughs> following seas are fantastic for everyone. So I'm on watch now. It's about 3.45 a.m. And I'm on the lookout for fads. Which is really bloody difficult because there's no moon. So the moon set, I don't know, maybe midnight or something. Dylan did the first watch until maybe 2.30. So he did like pretty much most of the night. Bless him, I got to sleep. So now he's sleeping out in the cockpit and yeah, I'm just doing my best to keep an eye out for a teeny tiny little fishing platform made of wood with absolutely zero lights with no moon and if we haven't explained to you yet what a fad is uh, it's a fish attracting device so essentially just a random little wooden platform in the middle of nowhere we see them all over the place in all different depths which is pretty crazy because they're anchored and they're permanent something I always think about is how crazy the stars are and I wish that you guys could actually see it, but there's, we don't have a camera that's going to be able to hold steady on the open ocean with long enough exposure to capture the stars for you guys, but they're just incredible. They're just huge, vast, infinite. Lots of shooting stars, hundreds of satellites every night. We're averaging about three knots now. Dylan had the head sail up earlier. We have a reef in the main, but um, just before I started my shift, Dylan took the head sail down because we were actually going too fast and we would have arrived into Kenki and uh, probably still in the dark. And obviously wanna, we want to arrive to places in the, in the light so we can see where we're anchoring and see anything that's around. So now we're averaging about three to four knots, which is a bit more reasonable. We will find you acting on it as Turn your back, come out of it. Morning, guys. I've just pulled the sails down because we are coming into Kangian now. first arrived maybe like 15 knots so when we dropped the anchor it grabbed first time which was 
quite handy because we were both pretty tired. Dylan pretty much did most of the passage last night. God bless him. On your deal. And I, I did only, I think I only did watch from like three to six or something, so hardly at all. And then as soon as that was done, I fell asleep on the couch. Uh, so, yeah, I've just been editing this morning, Dilla had a bit of a nap, and now he's trying to troubleshoot an issue with the AIS, or the antenna. And I decided that we are due for some washing. We've had the luxury of being at the marina for so long, we just dropped our washing off there for like 90 cents a kilo. So it was nothing. But now it's falling back on us. So I am usually, so usually when I do the washing, I do it in a bucket off the back with the hose off the back or I'll do it in the shower but I always have to like be bent like bending over and it, it's like quite a lot of strain so today I'm going to try and do it in the kitchen sink and we haven't gone to shore yet I don't know if we will it doesn't look as much around the actual archipelago of Kangian has heaps but this particular anchorage I'm not sure we should go to shore though but it's super windy and really choppy and it's we have to dingy quite a ways to shore so maybe tomorrow um, I don't know how long we're going to stay here. How long are we staying here for, Dil? I don't know. Maybe today and tomorrow and then we'll head off. When we get to Kumo, there's a few things we want to try and take care of. So we want to look for a generator there, possibly. Because from the footage you may or may not have seen that we've been on the hunt and it's been really stressful. Like, we didn't do heaps of filming in Lavina because both of us had pretty much had a mental breakdown. It's one of those times in cruising where everything is so hard and can't find anything and of course the time we were looking for what we wanted it was Idle Fitzroy so it was a public holiday it's like being in Australia or North America or wherever and you know Christmas Day being like can you service my car and everyone's like no we can't service your car it's Christmas Day we're closed that's pretty much what it was like trying to have something done on a public holiday and nothing's open we went all the way into Denpasar to try and find stuff and every shop was closed and it was just really really stressful and everything was not going well and then to top it off Dylan had a huge migraine and it was really scary and it was yeah so so stressful but I'm boiling the, the kettle now so I have to do less effort with the washing I'll kind of let it soak in warm water for a while and then give it a give it a scrub I'm gonna start with the undies 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 it's like a recipe then you get your wooden spoon and you mix the dirty underwear around in the sink. Hey, Dill. Yeah. Calls for equal parts water to equal parts underwear to half parts laundry liquid. Hello. <laughs> Your mate. Shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> mm. So in boat life, you can pretty much do whatever you want. And I've chosen to cook uh, chocolate banana pancakes for dinner. Um, and Dylan's fishing for a squid, and he caught one. <laughs> Oops! Look <laughs> at me. I caught it to me. Oh! I gotta get him off. Yeah, how do you get him off? Oh. Oh, little chummy, it's okay. Bye, chummy. There's heaps here. Here you go. I might put bigger ones, but you probably can't see. But there's, I've just put my spotlight on the bait board and it sort of like sends the light out. And these, all these chummies have just come around sussing out the jig like fully sussing out see it oh there's one oh why are they so curious now they've all just left i wonder if they clued on i reckon they clued on Join us next week as we continue our passage north across the Java Sea.
and we spend some time exploring the cute little island of Palau Bawin. And don't forget we're currently offering a giveaway. We've paired with Alita Footwear to gift one of our lucky patrons a pair of Alita Adventure Shoes. To go in the draw and support our productions, perhaps consider becoming a patron of Sailing Blue Moon. Maybe you're not quite ready for a pledge commitment, but still want to show your support. Buy us a beer, shout us a shandy, or even a round of rum nuts. You can do so via our Sailing Blue Moon PayPal account with your very own shout out in the credits. Head on over to paypal.me forward slash Sailing Blue Moon. A reminder that patrons pledging $5 or more will receive their very own Sailing Blue Moon t-shirt made from 40% recycled bottles. Pretty cool. In addition to the subscribe button, click the little bell to the right to be notified of new weekly episodes. If you are interested in where we might be in real time, you can follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for watching, Blue Moonies.